welcome back to Men 101. My panel again, Nick, Tony, and Derek. Nice to have you on the show, guys. How y'all doing? Good, you? Good. Look at Tony, eh? All dapper today, buddy. And I figured let me go a bit more bright. Yeah, classy. <laughs> That's probably a good topic for you. They're well dressed, you know. Topic today, boys. Shivery is shivery dead. Oh. We have nice. a really cool guest, Anna Float. She's a president of Big Dog Sales Consulting. Mm -hmm. Our musical guest is uh, Derek Falls, which I believe you know, Nick. Yes, I do. And we have a fitness consultant instructor who's going to work out a couple of the boys today. Nice. Tony and Nick are going to get trained by Janelle of Power of Two Studios. Okay. Cool. So. I'm ready for that one. Ready I'm for excited that one. To see you guys that. ready for a workout? Yeah. Sure. So, is Chivalry dead? I'm excited to tackle this one. So, you have the floor, Derek. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> All yours. I feel like the pressure is on um, is Chivalry Should I give dead? you a little, let me, let me, let me, let me warm you up a little bit? Yeah, warm sure. Let me warm you up a little bit. Let me just see. Throw something at me. So, the definition of chivalry, the system of values such as loyalty and honor that knights in the Middle Ages were expected to follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. An honorable and polite way of behaving, especially toward women, slash men in your case. Okay. <laughs> so, no, sure. I've given you a warm up. Okay. What would you like to go with this one? It's chivalry dead. Okay, you know what? Um, based on that definition, definition mm -hmm. I would say that there are lingering ghosts of chivalry. I think that it does exist, but I think that it's changed because as a society in general, in Western society, we understand more so now, women don't need a man to throw down their coat for them to do anything to accomplish. And they don't need a man to, you understand what I mean? That's what it is. Yeah, when we're is, getting there. When but is, we're letting you continue. <laughs> okay, so I think Sorry, I said Nick, this. When, like, we, when we got this topic before, I think I said to you, um, <clears throat> it has fizzled out because of women's lib, mm -hmm. generally. Because a lot of times with, when we look at what the, what is the traditional idea of chivalry, um, I think a lot of, men became afraid to put that out there because they got flack from women who were saying, well, no, I can be independent. I can do this myself. I don't need you to hold my door for me. I don't mm -hmm. need you to pay for me. I can work for myself and I can make for myself. So Correct. I think that that changed everything um, drastically. I'll yeah. tell you why I brought this topic up and I like this topic, boys. Uh -huh. There's a new app out there called the Chivalry app. So hypothetically, let's say we go on a date, Derek. Uh -huh. and uh, we don't get along, or you don't like me, or I don't like you, whatever, and uh, let's say you pick up the bill, and the bill is like, whatever, a hundred and something odd dollars. Okay. And uh, you don't feel there's no chemistry, and it's not worth it. You can send me a text message or something, or like an email or something, with half the price of the bill. But <clears throat> who's the guarantee you're gonna pay it? Would you do it? Or the woman's gonna what? pay it, or, or vice versa. Uh, but it's would you do that? I don't know if I wait, can. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. Is the expectation, though, that automatically, if, let's say, a man and a woman are going out, they decided to go on a date, is the expectation that he is to pay? It, it seems that way from the chivalry point of view, that you would be paying because you're the man, right? Now, in, in, in the gay community, we don't know if, how that works. Does it work well, the same way? But, like, I know if it's coffee or it's ice cream or it's dinner, it always seems like, if you don't pay, you're considered cheap. Well, okay, uh, it's so blurry, but this is where it's flawed. Are we In getting my the pumas opinion, a bit? Pumas? You were getting the pumas, yeah, <laughs> pumas. That's the pumas me, definition. Puma. You're getting the pumas definition. Um, okay, so in my world, it is a, basically, if you're asking me out, it is almost expected that you ask me out, you're going to take care of this. Okay. Which I think, I agree with him, like if I ask a woman out, same thing. So if you ask a I woman ask out and you say, she says, well, let's get together. You say, okay, let me, um, how do we go for coffee? So she says to you, well, why not we go for dinner? Okay, but that's a different story. I choose. If I really want to take the girl out for dinner, then I'll take her out to dinner. Okay. So, 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 so if a woman invites you, is she expected to pay? I feel awkward having her pay See, this, for me. And that's where it's blurry and that's where right. it got, like that's where it's fizzled. And why would it, why should it be awkward if a woman is like, I want to take you for dinner, or let's go for dinner. Um, you understand what I mean? Yeah. So I think that we're just so cultured to believe a certain thing, which is that old definition of chivalry, mm -hmm. right? Does that 
Am I making sense here? Yeah, no, I, no it's, sure. it's, 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 um, but it's, I get it. Like, you know, in the past, it's happened to me in the past, and it was, you know, <coughs> dinner. I go, well, no, let's just grab frozen yogurt or something, and you're cheap. Well, why am I cheap? I, I need to get to know you. I would think I'd rather sit down and talk to you right. for 25 minutes or 10 minutes. You know, basically, the truth matters. You know five, six, seven minutes in, you're either going to like the person or not, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that. So I'd rather sit down and get to know the person over an ice cream or a walk or uh, frozen yogurt or, or iced tea or whatever it may be. I'd rather sit across the table and spend two hours with somebody I don't want to spend two hours with and then b be looked at to uh, front the bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, I mean, no, why would you... Uh, the, I get that. The Absolutely. only question is simple is, why are you offended by a meal or a meal, and it says to you, I'm going to take you for uh, a drink or, or, or a ice cream, but no, no, I want the full whack. I want the dinner and, and uh, the wine and this and that, whatever. And then again, I think, I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but again, from the female's side of it, and the, maybe the male's side of it in Derek's case, maybe the expectation is you think you're going to get somewhere when you take me out for this meal. That's a first date. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have that expectation where, oh, so you, if you're going to pay, does that mean you think you're going to get right, somewhere right. after that? So that's why probably something very relaxed and easy, like a coffee mm -hmm. or a frozen yogurt or something like that, then you can feel it out that way. Well, for me, if a woman even offers to pay for her, for her half, it's a step in the right direction. I'll never allow her to pay. Right. But just the, the, the fact that she offered is... Is enough. M is enough. But yeah, that's, right. that's Which doesn't happen all the time. Well, no. you're, the, you're, the, you're the serial I'll dealer you. here. So you tell us. <laughs> You know, that's Listen, the you know what? Uh, it's true. You know. Sometimes, uh, often, uh, you know, even after a couple of dates with them, if they're not, you know, even offering to buy you a coffee, you know, you start stepping back a bit, going, "Well, are you?" Well, you've had some my, my question is, can women be chivalrous? I think so. Well, we'll find out. Should they? I Should think so. It's a two-way street. Yeah, I don't see why it isn't. Leaving over and locking a car door if you have an older model car. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was from the movie, man. They no, usually the roll the window down. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't open. Wasn't that from a Bronx Tale? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, that's the old where if you open the door for the young woman and then what you do is and you close the door and you walk around the back of the you door see, wait, that to was, see does she open was, your door. That, wait, was, wait, wait. that was Eddie Murphy, Robin Givens. No, it was also, Bronx Bronx also the Bronx Tale with Robert De Niro. Something came up to me. It came to me though. Do you not think that chivalry has a lot to do with the delicate male ego? Because this is something that I find happens all the time. So there's, I don't want to not look like a man, so I'm going to pay, regardless you know what, Derek, of how I feel. You hold that thought. We'll be back in, uh, after the break, and we'll have Anna on, Anna float on after the break, okay? Awesome. See you right after the break, guys. Welcome back. So we have here today with us Anna Fote. How are you doing, Anna? Fantastic. How are okay, you? Okay, so let's just bring you up to speed. <laughs> Anna is the president of Big Dog Sales Consulting. She's a marketing and sales, sales consultant, has worked at BlackBerry and IBM as a worldwide managing editor. She launched her company in 2015, got fed up with the corporate world, enjoys hot yoga and wine in her spare time. So, I do. Nice, Anna, eh? <laughs> Any particular type, red or white? Oh, oh the wet oh, stuff. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> Delicious. So, I, I, so, you know the reason you're here. I, I, we sp spoke about this new app, this chivalry app that uh, is chivalry day and stuff like that. So you have some technical data for us, I don't believe. <laughs> is that right? Well, I don't think chivalry ever was alive. Chivalry was always this ideal. I heard you guys talking about this idea of <coughs> knights and the round table, and it's always been fraught with religion and politics and how people ought to be in aristocracy and this yearning for a time that never existed. So I don't know that chivalry was ever alive. We always look back to this time in the past that we thought existed, but I don't know that it ever did. But I think it's dying. If it wasn't already dead, women's lib and other things have totally killed it. Mm -hmm. and this, I, app, this app will definitely shoot it out to the sky. <laughs> 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 it's done for sure. I want to like give you like a standing ovation that was because you don't really think about that, that it literally is something that's completely made up that never really existed. I love that. <laughs> so. But you seem to think chivalry is all about money. 
fro-yo uh, or a fancy I dinner. It's money. <laughs> well, it's not, I don't think it's about money. I, I, it, it seems to be when nobody wants to just go for a walk or nobody wants to, it's, where are you taking me? Or, or are we going for dinner? Or what are you getting? Where to meet? So well, let's meet in the grocery store and walk around the grocery store and sure. have a conversation. It's, it's like we had on somebody in the, our first episode was online dating. It would have been an interesting one for you. And she said, well, instead of walking up and telling the woman she's beautiful, walk up and say, well, I, I, I'm thinking of get the same phone, phone you get. Is that the iPhone 6 or whatever? Yeah, I'm thinking of getting that. What do you think? Like, you're trying to get in there to talk to somebody. So what? It's, it's the same concept of take me for dinner or well, let's just go for a walk. Right. Oh, you're boring. Huh? Why am I boring? You're with the wrong women. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I keep my distance from all types of women. Yeah, but a, a lot of women nowadays, they want the man to take initiative. They want the man to plan the night out. So, is it, I mean, th there are still women that invite the man out to dinner. Sure. Or a movie, whatever. But it's mostly the men that are the hunters, right? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> like I said, th they want the authority figure. So if you're, if you're the one that's going to take initiative and, and plan the night, we're going to dinner, we're going to a movie, a show, whatever. I mean... Me personally, I think it, it should be the man to, that pays. I mean, like I said earlier, that I, I, I just the fact that the woman would offer to pay for her own way is more than enough. But I'd never. Yeah, but let after her a couple pay. of dates, it's nice to be treated to even on the. Yeah, but after, aspect, after, you know, after a couple of dates, it becomes you're not. Still dating. Date, well, nowadays, dating, dating, dating can last up to like uh, three months. Other. It doesn't mean it has to be. Oh, you're like the many day route guy. Is that what you are? But I want to touch on something mm -hmm. because you said like the asking out and then and the planning of and you also mentioned the woman asking out. So then wouldn't you say that it is the person who Does is inviting ask? you out, they're inviting you out for an evening so they're offering up their wallet or their but chivalry, I, but, but, right? I, I don't disagree with you there, Derek, but what this not, that's not the issue. The issue is take me for dinner. I might invite you out for drinks or, or coffee. Well, why can't we go for dinner? I want to go for dinner. It's not It's not about going out and paying for anything. That's not the issue with yeah, But me. if you choose, you ask the person. But if the person you says... the place, mm -hmm. and they should be okay with yeah, it, but no matter what, what it is. What, what Alan's mean. saying is that you, you invite somebody out for coffee, because it's, 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 it's no, but it's happened to me where, like, we plan a, a night, let's go catch a movie. Yeah. You know, and, and until about two, two, three hours before I went to pick her up, uh, you want to go to dinner instead. So, so obviously, like a twenty, thirty dollar movie to like a two hundred dollar dinner is a different thing. Mm -hmm. So she's changing the plan. So then again, if you but change the plan, then that would be a good way. So if you're going to call me and tell me, how about you take me to dinner? Well, how about you pay? No. Then, well, I, can you imagine the can you imagine the the, the, the feedback from that? Yeah. yeah like, well, listen, so, I, I would I would just tell her download the app. <laughs> but here's the, here's another question, which is uh, it's from our age group. Our parents have brought us up a certain way, right? It'd be interesting to see how the younger age group comes up now. Are they getting taught the same way, no. like to open the door? Like mm. opening the listen, you just opening the door for anybody is, is being chivalrous, right? Sure. Yes. You're, you're, and you and you don't get a thank you sometimes when you even open the door for men or women. Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you say to yourself, why even bother? But then again. Somebody once said to me, why are you opening the door and waiting for a thank you? Don't even bother waiting for it. Open the door and keep walking and keep your own business going. So if they want to be polite and thank you, then that's up to them. Then, Well, you, this is, I think, in thinking about chivalry, I think it boils down to intent. Yes. So if the intent is to get in my pants, then, then it's not chivalrous. No, it's not. Um, you're having buying me this expensive dinner and then there's an expectation that there'll be some kind of reciprocation if the intent is I would like to go out for a really nice dinner with you and get to know you then that is very chivalrous just like a well, woman you just said that chivalry never existed which I disagree with you uh, I do believe it existed and I, I asked actually a couple of younger uh, generation girls and one of them who's 24 said no it doesn't exist any longer unfortunately due to women's equality and you'll find chivalry in men usually that are born before 1980. Her, her, her answer. But do the younger women want a man to be? They don't, they, I think a lot of them don't know what it is. That well, is, and that's another point. What's the expectation? Yeah. Right. right? What do you, as a woman, what is your expectation of yourself and people around you? I'll tell you, I traveled a lot when I was in the corporate world. And mm -hmm. it, this idea of emasculating men and chivalry and kind of, what the, size. Yeah, what the appropriate thing to do was reared its head all the time. And I was walking through an airport in Brazil, and a colleague of mine who had been friends for, for a decade said to me, would you like for me to carry your bag? 
And I said, oh, that's such a nice offer, but it's okay. I do this for a living. I can carry my own bag. It's mm -hmm. fine. And a minute later, he said, Anna, like every Brazilian man in the joint is looking at me like I'm a really awful person because look at this woman in high-heeled shoes with this big bag carrying it through the airport. So I said to him, I, I don't want to make you look bad. Like, I can carry my own damn bag, but if, you're, if it's looking poorly on you, then sure, fill your boots, carry my bag. You know, so it's this weird perception thing. But then you think, in thinking about this show, am I perpetuating some myth that I'm a damsel in distress? Because I'm more worried about the perception of him, even though I can carry my own bag. Mm -hmm. So do you take offense to that? I didn't take offense at all. I think, you know, part of this is men should be able to be vulnerable, but women should accept kindness. Right. Everyone should accept kindness. I agree. Wherever agree. it comes yeah. from. Absolutely. And it, it's about the genuine, it's about the intent of the, of, the, of the offer as well. So do you think that in that moment you were being a little chival a chival a chivalrous yourself, perhaps? Well, maybe. I mean, I think I look upon it maybe more practically. I think there is, there are always gender dynamics, mm -hmm. always. Um, I remember being in Germany and I was at a big table of much older men and I was the one trying to do business with them, not the other way around. And I went to the waiter and said, here's my credit card. Please don't bring the bill to the table. Please, I would like... Hold that thought, Anna. We'll be right back. We're back. Anna, you were saying there before the break. Well, the bill came, uh, the bill never came to the table because I had, I had to argue with the waiter and then all the guys at the table were kind of shocked that I had picked up the tab. But I think we talk, talked about this before. I invited them out for a meal that I was hosting. I didn't want the bill to come to the table because I feel like they would have offered, they, you know, because this idea of doing the right thing or, or kind of manning up would have reared its head. And it was just my way of not even engaging in that conversation. After the, the meal was done, the waiter, who had never seen a woman pick up the tab before, kind of helped me get all these guys on their way and said, you and me, we're drinking cognac. I want to talk to you some more. <laughs> so I do think it's maybe somewhat rare that women pick up the tab. Do you think it's also cultural? Because it, I, think, I think we know that here you would not get the same reaction. You would get a waiter being like, yeah, sure, okay. Like, it was a little more paternalistic there, for sure. Exactly. Okay. So very cultural. Um, I want to tap on the whole chivalry to get in one's pants <laughs> note. Right. Um, do you think that that actually happens on both ends? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. because you see women going into a bar with a really sexy little dress and no purse, and exactly. leaving hours <laughs> later <laughs> inebriated. <laughs> so. Love it. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, right, some women okay. don't know that alcohol costs money. Right. That's where I wanted, exactly, that's exactly what I wanted <laughs> out there. How about you in the gay community? Same thing? Um, to be honest, I feel like it is, there's so much more, maybe I live in a bubble, I do, in my own bubble, but it's, it's a lot more fair. There's not so much. <clears throat> now, I do have to say, with that said, I've, I've not personally asked people out before. Right. I've been asked out, but that's just because I'm shy. I, I don't know how to hunt. I've never hunted <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's a No, I've never day. hunted. No, I've hunted for shoes, um, <laughs> but not for... No, so I've been asked out. That said, um, I have offered many times to pay, and this is where I feel like it's such a male ego thing and I always get denied, literally. Mm -hmm. I've always been denied. Right. Um, oh, let's pay, and no, it's okay. Or I'll get the, no, I got this, I, I've got this, you get the next time. Mm -hmm. Which, Which is okay. totally fair. That's okay. fair. Like, yeah. And I get that, so it seems, it feels a lot more fair yeah, in my mm -hmm. world. Yeah, if you do that back and forth, that there's nothing wrong with it. I'll give you an example, I went on a date one time, and. I've been brought up to open the door and all, and that, so my father opened the door for my mother and the left, right, and center. So, I, uh, that's a while back. Um, I opened the door, uh, I, I got up, I opened the door, no, I opened the door to let her in. And then when we parked, I got out and I went and paid the meter, and she sat in the car and wouldn't get out of the car until I opened the door. So, and I was walking and I was, and I look back, I go, I'm like, she's, she's still, so I'm back to the car, I go, what are you doing sitting in the car? She says, I'm waiting for you to open the door. 
I said, really? I said, well, I consider my mother a lady. And my father would open her door to put her in, but she was well and capable enough to open her own door to get out, so I think you were well and capable enough to do the same. So this girl was brought up <coughs> and spoilt by constantly opening the door, close the door, wait for it to open. That's, that's over the top. That's not chivalrous. That's just abuse of yeah. chivalry then, I would think. <laughs> oh, I, I was like, I was, that was it. There was, no, <laughs> there was nothing after there, that. There, I was done. There's, there's a difference b between being a lady and being a princess. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right? Exactly. Don't tilt your head too much, you'll drop your crown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's good. I've never heard that, and I like it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's a little overkill, yeah, I feel like. But, you know, they, but that's, like, again, a princess. There's people like And her. i got to be honest, there is someone out there for her, for that person who wants that right. man to always open the door for you. My problem is the assumption right off the bat, I'm going to sit here and wait, mm -hmm. and I'm going to oh, test that's you. Exactly. That's something that you keep in your head. Right. And if he doesn't yeah. open the door, then you use your arm <laughs> and you open the door. And then you go home, and you talk to your girlfriends, and you vent about it, if that's what you want. It's not about giving out that attitude where this is what I deserve. That's very entitled. Game. Exactly. Yeah, and that's what, exactly it's, what it is. It's, it's such should a just lock the doors and stuff. Why didn't have yeah. to be beaten? <laughs> 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 so, so. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> You're Nothing. just lucky, Derek. <laughs> too, too handsome in the world, bro. I just too can't. I just don't. Yeah, just no. <laughs> so, chivalry isn't dead. Guys just get tired of ungrateful women. What do you think of this statement? Is it wrong or is it fair? Well, I think there's probably ungrateful women, but in preparing, one in seven men will offer a woman a seat on the bus. Only one in seven. But only 7% of women find that patronizing. So I think part of the, the problem is that men feel are over-rotated on this idea that all women are, are not open to kindness and are going to shut them down. So that, that they're in fact insulting or offending the woman right. by being courteous and chivalrous. Right. Okay. That's exactly, I agree with that. I really do think that there was so much pushback on um, being what we consider a gentleman that men got scared into a corner, and so they don't. But that said, I can't tell you the amount of times I've been on, I don't take public transit, um, but when I do, <laughs> I, when I have. How many men get up for you? They, <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> Nick did. <laughs> it's always shocking to me when I see, um, not just, it's not so much the young ones, because I find that this younger, younger generation now, especially the millennials, I know there's so much bad press about the millennials, but it's not unfounded. They don't move, I'm not surprised by that. What surprises me are guys who are my age and older who don't think about offering, especially when there's a pregnant woman. Mm, right, for sure. I can't tell you the amount of times when I have been like seen, on, and there is not one budge of, I had to take the TTC for about two months, a couple winters ago, because it broke my toe, and it was a whole thing. And anyways, um, and I was enraged all the time, and I never sat with my broken toe. That's why and, we love you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but I was enraged. I would think to myself, but aren't you, gonna, aren't you gonna move, young man, for this woman who's standing here waiting with her pregnant belly, or this woman who could be your grandmother? Yada, yada, so, so on and so forth. I find that that's really... But that's so like that? the de, like sexualizing of chivalry, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. The just kindness. The yeah. intent is this person probably could use some kindness, and an extra that, kindness. Yeah. That but is that something to do with the, would that be something to do with the parents then? Not bringing, I think so. bringing them up? Yeah, I think so. Teaching them that, like, everything's changing and so rapidly, like, you don't have cursive writing in schools anymore where we used, like I was talking to younger ones, There's don't no even know what, what a letter was. No, cursive's no. gone. You can't no more cursive. Everyone's just no typing cursive. on the phone. So, oh, no. No. so so that's what's so that's what's happening. So is it is it the parents, these younger like what did their parents teach these parents? They're not teaching these young guys and young women that are growing up today. They're not hold the door open and don't wait for tonight. You just hold the door open. Mm -hmm. If it's a pregnant woman and, and actually, I'm going to come right back after this because uh, we've got to go to break. We'll see you in a bit. It's that kindness and respect.
and we're back. As I was saying before the break, like, is it the, the, the parents have to start instilling this? Like, like I said, just open a door. You don't need to be waiting on a thank you, mm -hmm. you know, car door, elderly woman. And like, I remember one time just being at the gas station, and the woman actually thought I worked at the gas station because I was pumping my own gas. Can you fill my gas, sir? Oh, absolutely no problem. Like, and you, pay me, so you have to pay inside. <laughs> you give me the money. But these younger generations don't seem to have that instilled in them. So. No. And it's and like I, everything. Everything's rapidly changing. And and we and seem I to come from a completely different generation now. And I think it is from the parents. The parents have to instill that from a they young do. age. Yeah, absolutely. But what about this whole idea of kind of expectation? So I heard the argument that chivalry's dead because hookup culture is a thing. So why should a man be chivalrous to a woman when he can just text her and have a booty call at 2 a.m.? No need for flowers or dinner there. Yeah, that, you know what? You still need that connection with that girl. And you, you know, you talk and you... You hang out, but you 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 do you experience things during the day too. You know you go do things. I mean, if you just text somebody because you're having a booty call, that's you know depending how long you last. It could be five minutes. It could be an hour. <laughs> who knows? But you know it, what I mean? It, like <clears throat> it's it, that that's what that's just different. You know, it's, when you have a connection with a girl, you don't want to treat her like that. You right. want to treat her with respect and oh, so that's now, it's, so now it's depending on how you like the gear is what you're saying. No, a connection isn't it always, though. I feel like isn't that always the case when no. it comes to the no. game in general? I'm looking you're from sort the of outside. outside. You're not, you're not, you're not going to hold the door open just for a girl that you like or you're trying to get into her pants. You're going to hold the door open for anybody. That's be, true. Be it a man, At be the it store, a I'll, I'll open the door for anybody. I'll, but that's like, for you. But I'm talking about in the game I'm of talking about the dating, part. of like literally the... the you, I'm not talking about you holding the door for a random person yeah. on the street. I'm talking about the woman who you're just trying to get into her pants or the one that you actually care about. So you think thing. there's a difference? There's the whole the and door you, open the way you treat them. There's the one that you're like, right. hey, text, come over, let's it's Netflix still open the door for the chill. one that you text, though. Pardon That's me? Netflix you still open the door for the one you would text, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. but are you, are you opening the door because you care about them, or are you opening the door because no, you want to get into I, their I pants? Think, chivalry. But no. you're still trying to get into the... Chivalry. Basically, what you're saying is you're still trying to get into both of their pants. One's a booty call, and one's a, 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 a prospective dating. You're still going to open the door for both. Would you, Tony? For sure. Chivalry so, is not... It, it, it's not who you're with. It's it's within you. Right. So it, 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 it so if it's instilled within you, it's for it, it's in regards to everybody, not just it's universal. So correct. then that touches on exactly what you said before, which I completely agree with, is that it should be just sexless, generally sexless. genderless. Because like, if you come in, if I come kindness. to a door with a stack of books kindness, and yeah. I can't grab the door and you open exactly. it for me, that's so kind. Mm -hmm. But I would do the same for you. Exactly, and that's what I was getting at too. And I think it's the difference is in the parents because I was raised and my and my brother, my family were raised to just be kind, just to be good people. Like, and that's it. Period. You right. know. So, and that starts at home. It does. Mm -hmm. It's always been like that. And well, it's, it's that's continue being like that too. Is that being from the UK, Ireland direction, and you being from Greek heritage and mm -hmm. you from Italian heritage, and and Europeans seem to be instilled in that? Like, I mean, like you see Brazil, South America, and so the men seem to be instilled that way. Like we had a great conversation here with I think it was Dr. Morris about mm -hmm. the nurture of a man and why men like men are afraid to cry in public or men. So it's we're brought up not to cry. So in the same context, is it <clears throat> European men and South American men, and uh, I guess from uh, maybe Africa and Asia could be the same. I don't know, but I mean, I have no idea. they seem to be. In, it's as Nick said, instilled in them to always be respectful towards the female uh, population. So is chivalry a machismo, or is it a ma is it equivalent to being macho? I think for some guys it is. Okay. I think. Having traveled in those places, I think there's more of kind of a patriarchal culture and maybe some of the kindness, the kind of sexless kindness here in North America has been obscured by men not wanting to look like they're pandering. Mm -hmm. But I found, you know, in other places, there's much more overt chivalry. So every man doing for every woman. Mm -hmm. I found in Brazil it was every man would do this not cat collie crass north american kind of thing that happens here but women were very beautiful and put together and they'd kind of walk and men would just do this this thing like i notice that you're gorgeous and i watched this guy on the beach the one day and he did it like pretty much to every woman from 18 to 60. so it wasn't this you're 22 years old and you're beautiful and hot and in the prime of your youth it was more like an appreciation as a man to a woman and whatever that woman offered. 
Mm -hmm. Can I, I need to add to this because I feel like it is, it, now in North America, it's uh, the chivalry thing and it's, it's kind of a, a whole mishmash, but I feel like it's a very cultural thing too and I think it's global. I think it doesn't matter the continent. I think that there are different chivalrous practices in different cultures. You understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what I mean by that, right? Brazil right. may be different right. to uh, Nigeria, which is different to um, Japan, which is different to Germany. Like in the way men are chivalrous to women in that borderline sexist view of chivalry. But if, if you go back to the kindness and intent, like my whole thing is I want to want a man I don't need a man, yeah. but I want to want him. Right. Mm -hmm. And a man doing kind things for me is lovely and kind, kind of full stop. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have an online question. Okay. Do you still have to be chivalrous, chivalrous after marriage? If you want to stay married. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I agree. I agree. You can't choose to uh, during the, uh, the courting period. Yeah. Okay. So how about when you're in a long term relationship for quite a while. Are flowers still expected? They're always appreciated. Yes. Not expected. I don't expect flowers, but it's always <clears throat> nice to receive them. Okay, so like Valentine's, which is expected day to buy flowers. Can Why not do jobs? something different? I mean, you know, like us men, I find, we're in, under the gun pressure to buy the flowers because you have to buy it on that day. But I will say as a woman, getting flowers is always nice. But it, getting something different that is thoughtful on Valentine's Day that is not flowers is nicer than getting flowers. Although getting flowers is certainly nice any day of the year. But I think it's more appreciated when you get it when you don't expect yeah, it. That's, that's exactly that's right. That's what I mean. Exactly. Thursday afternoon flowers. Should be I mean, Valentine's yes. Exactly. Should be Valentine's every day of your relationship. Yes. <laughs> I love flowers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you? I screamed that out. <laughs> Was I thinking aloud again? <laughs> no, Another but I really online do. question is, is chivalry dying because women aren't demanding respect in all aspects from men? Have they gotten a free pass? Oh. I think you kind of get what you expect, right? So if, if women expect very little, then perhaps they're the women that are receptive to the booty call. If they expect more, it's not that they should expect like, I expect that you're going to open my door and I'm going to sit here in the car until you come around. But I think when you expect more of men and expect more of yourself, then you know you get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like the there's there we live in a culture where, that said, there's a lot of. Um, uh, Sorry to cut you off, Derek. Uh -huh. We'll have to come back after break. Anna, it was awesome having you on the show here, but we'll be right back after break, guys. Well, we're back here with our fitness segment, and we have Tony and Nick working out here with the instructor, Janelle. Hi, Janelle. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? You're going to put these boys through the workout? Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to push them to their limits. Cool, cool. So Janelle is a president of Power of Two Studios, yep. personal trainer and a fitness expert. Yep. Uh, she owns and operates her fitness studio called Power of Two Studios, yep. which I just said. She also tours schools as a guest speaker, teaching and empowering youth on a healthy and positive body image. Yeah. I, you can tell I see everybody. <laughs> so let's see, could you do something with these two guys? So what have you got going on today? Okay, so I'm going to start with very simple fundamental exercises. These exercises can be replicated at home. So as you can tell, I have absolutely no equipment. So I'm very progressive when I train people, meaning I like to see what your body's capable of doing first because mm. your body naturally wants to create balance. So I'm not a stickler for form. I just want to see what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And then based on what you're capable of, I'll modify you slightly. OK, so we're going to warm you guys up. Super simple. Mm -hmm. Make um, a tough one, boy. <laughs> it's, we're going to do 30 seconds. If you can't last 30 seconds, you need to leave, OK? <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do 30 seconds of jumping jacks. We're not going there. Here's the thing with jumping jacks, OK? So breathing is very important anytime you're exercising. <clears throat> so whenever you're coming out of an exercise is when I would tell you to exhale. So here's an example for a squat. You would breathe in uh, when you're up, and then as you go down, you're, you're going to breathe out as you, sorry, you're going to breathe out as you come up. So breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Breathing is super important when you're doing anything that's cardio-based. It's going to get your heart rate up. You need to be able to control your breathing, okay? 
Um, so really simple. I'm going to count to 30. You guys are going to get in as many jumping jacks as you can. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. assume that you, I assume that you know what jumping jacks well, are, I yes? I like think to so. see you do a jumping jack, and so they have an actual idea what a jumping so jack is. It's, it's just, just like this. <laughs> okay. okay. Super so. simple. Just remember, control your breathing. Okay. Breathe in. Out. I'll do it with you. Let's go. I so got them in, all. In, in with the hands up, out with hands yeah. up. Okay. Super simple. Okay, ready? 30 ready. seconds on my eight. count. I'll move back a little bit. Ready? Okay. 30 yeah. seconds. Go. With enthusiasm, guys. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breathe. Eight. Breathe. Nine. Breathe. Ten. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Intentional breath out. 13, 14, 15, 16. Awesome. 17, 18, 19, 20, 10, 9, 8. Good. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, awesome. How do you guys feel? Heart rates are up, yes? It's up, it's up, it's Good. up. So, <laughs> I'm just going to point out the fact that in 30 seconds, your heart rates got up. These are very simple exercises. So for That's me, cool. exercise is all about moving your body. There is no right or wrong. It's just about being active, okay? So now I'm going to go through three very simple exercises for you guys. We're going to go over the squat, mm -hmm. push-up, and everyone's dreaded burpee. Mm -hmm. Do we know what burpees are? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, yeah, awesome. Squats. So um, we're gonna start with squats. So squats are really important, especially when it comes to form. Squats are probably one of the best exercises you can do. Um, squats are working your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and they're actually also engaging your core if you're doing them properly. So having said that, I'm so gonna these, get you guys. These exercises yep. for like, people getting started back in the gym and stuff yeah. like that, like instead of somebody's been working on it like myself, and these guys aren't up for the shape. Yeah. But like I me, mean, these are for the guy that's overweight or out of shape that could do this at home without any issue. Yes, absolutely. These um, exercises are so simplistic and they're so basic. So a modified version of a squat that I would give someone who hasn't worked out in a really long time would be something as simple as sitting and standing. So um, if I had a chair, it's literally just the modified version of a squat is sitting and standing. You do that enough times, it's your version of a squat. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm going to go over the, the proper way to do a squat because there's a whole bunch of different misinformation out there on how to do a squat. I like to do the general rule of um, butt to grass. Okay, So basically what you're going to do is you're going to bring your butt as low as you can to the ground. Ooh, yeah. Making sure that as you come up, you're engaging with your heels, making contact through the heels, and you're going to breathe out, driving the knees out, pelvis tuck. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I don't know how long I can go though. That's okay. So here's the thing. Everyone, when I show people these exercises, everyone's always like, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to go as low as you. Well, I've been doing this for nine years, so I don't expect you to be able to do it that way. I want you to do your best version of a squat. There is no right or wrong. I will come in and modify if I need to. Okay. Okay. okay? You want to so again, 30? I sure do. Let's see those butts drop down. Yeah. No, no, not 30 seconds. I just want to see you do oh. a squat. So what do we, how, what Good. do we? Good. And come up. Let's, okay. One more time, we're going to go down, breathe in. Awesome. And breathe out. Good. Again? Awesome. So when I have people do this, typically, I'll see their heels come up. That just means that your core is not strong enough to balance you. Totally understandable. Totally fine. You guys My were actually really strong, great. Right? No, you so did. Good course. You did okay. You did okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. Look like you're going to fall Keep forward. Up the good totally work. <laughs> okay, so, but that's very common. People will tip forward, and that's completely fine. So what we're going to do is I'm not going to get you to bring your butt all the way Okay. to the ground. I just want you to get to a point where you feel comfortable, okay. okay, because I don't want you to injure yourself. So these exercises are the best way with absolutely no weight, no resistance to do decrease exercise. I've been doing this for five years and I've never had anyone injure themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it could be the first time. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that I hurt them. No, no. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, so we're going to do 30 seconds of squats, okay? <coughs> so just remember, making contact through the heel, breathe <coughs> out as you come up. So we're going to do 30 seconds of this. It will get your heart rate up. Don't give up, especially you. I, I feel like you're up. looking at me like, okay, ready? 30 me? seconds. No, him. him. Okay, ready? 30 seconds. On my count. Breathe in, breathe out. Go ahead. Get in as many reps as you can. Let's get a little competition going on here, guys. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18. I like that you guys are smiling. 19, 20, good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Next cheating. 1. Beautiful. How do you feel? How much is it? Cheater. How much is it? Ah, you see? He's going to the class. So how do you feel right now? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like, no, I hate you. No, no, one, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, awesome, because we're going to do this again. So I'm just going through the exercises with you. So now we're going to do push-ups. 
If you guys can't do push-ups, I'm going to make fun of you. So just be prepared for that. Do your best version of a push-up. So there's a whole oh, bunch geez. of various ways to do a push-up. I'll do a female one. Knees touching. Okay, first of all, that's insulting. Okay, because wow. I can do real push-ups. So we need to get them. That's a chivalrous in me. So let's get them. Okay, so we're going to do push-ups. Okay, so I just want to do it with you guys. Your arms are going to be tucked to your body. Nice, clean line. Shoulder right over the hand. Okay? You're going to down. Close up. rib on top of that. Oh. Yes. Oh, no wide oh, push-ups. You want to keep everything nice and tight. You want to keep the core engaged, okay? Ready? You're going to go 30 seconds of push-ups. The modified oh, version. You're actually going to come right down onto For your me, chest. For me, this is the modified version. Rest. Rest. Hang on. Rest. Okay. And now push yourself up. Awesome. <laughs> rest. That's the modified version of a push-up, what he wanted to refer to as a girl push-up. Meanwhile, seconds, I can do real ones. Go. You're not so we're going to go 30 yet. seconds. Let's do it. Go. That's it. Tony. Well, good, good, good. One. <laughs> Two, come on guys, let's go. Breathe and out guys. as you come up. Four, five, Breathe in and down. six. Yeah. Breathe out as you come up, Holy beautiful. Shit, go, 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 go. Fighters. We're gonna go 15 more seconds. Push, one, two, I see beads of sweat. Three, four, <laughs> five, that means it's working, let's go. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Five more seconds, you're not done. Five okay. more seconds. <laughs> Well, listen, Jamal, that was fantastic. Very, very nice to meet you. Janelle Thank you so much for having me. Two studios. Yes. Is that it? Great. That's it, boys. You all good to go. We'll yeah. go right back after the break. Thank you. No burpees. I shouldn't have burpees. And we're back here. Janelle, as I said, to give us some more uh, tips on how the boys done on their workout yeah. there. So these terrible. would be the type of guys that... Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> In all of my years of doing this, I've never seen two wow. people as bad as you two. Well, this is... More you, though. Yeah. The whole point is what I was trying to do is the like, guys that don't go to the gym that often, yes. they're out of shape. Yes. Uh, what are you um, saying? Well, apparently you guys are out of shape. Like, oh, no, I go to the gym. I oh, just what don't do you go do in, the gym? I drive just <laughs> What do you do at the gym? That the counts as something. That's effort. <laughs> I'll take yeah, effort. Yeah. Uh, that was I can show you my membership. Are you <laughs> yeah. But the whole point was to help men out there that aren't don't go to gyms or maybe out of shape, overweight, that don't want to like have a confidence thing going into a gym, like mm -hmm. you know, and then just be able to do some stuff, proper techniques at home, or a various of things. So you put the guys through the workout. So. I think exercise can be very daunting for people, especially if you've never worked out before. It's not meant to be. So for me, um, there's like the stigma around what exercise is. You need to be in a gym and you need to be lifting weights and you need to be doing heavy things. For people who are beginning, I would actually tell them not to do that because that's when they get injured because they don't know what they're doing. And then they end up injuring themselves, being discouraged and not wanting to go back. So for me, the only way you get results is if you're consistent. So consistency for me is just finding one thing that you really enjoy, getting really good at it, and then adding something new in. I so it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you're moving your body. I did forget that, that, that there's actually some loopholes in that. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Really. I did forget <laughs> that we have a, like a fitness fanatic at the end of the table on oh, Mr. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. Now, right body there. architect. <laughs> body architect. Sure. That's right. You know? <laughs> so uh, now, no, do you think guys will try to improve on your physiques, or will you? More or maybe I'll actually use my membership. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, like, I need, I need it. I mean, well, the good sad. news is that you're consistent. You're just consistent with not going. Exactly. So if you put your energy into actually going, you might get better but that's results. That's what it is. It's always breaking, you know, that first step, making that first step, and then after it yeah, absolutely. becomes easier. Yeah. So, so Janelle, I wanted to ask you, uh, you said we, what we did, the, the, what is it, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, yes. or 30, 10? Um, okay, so typically a Tabata, Tabata is something really simple. It's actually an app you can download on your phone. <clears throat> And what it is, is it's one exercise, so let's just say jumping jacks. Mm -hmm. And what you would do is you would pick that exercise, you would do eight rounds where you're working consistently for 20 seconds, and then you get to rest for 10. Just, for example, jumping jacks, yes. just jumping jacks, just for eight jumping rounds. Jacks. Okay. Yeah, and then you just see, like, so for me, it depends on how you want to challenge yourself. So what I would usually do is I would pick, like, the hardest exercise, because I'm crazy. So I would do burpees. So I would do 20 seconds of burpees nonstop, and what I would either do is try to beat beat it in the next round. Mm -hmm. So if I did 10, let's say in 20 seconds, I'd try to get 11 in the next round okay. or just keep consistent with that. Okay. So I find that people are the most consistent when they have a goal to reach. So I always tell people, if you're a beginner, pick one exercise and either time that exercise and see how many reps you can get. Mm -hmm. Or let's say you give yourself a goal of 25 burpees and see how fast you can do them. Okay. So that way you actually have something attainable to reach and then you have something attainable to surpass. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And how long do you crazy. think these guys are going to need to, in their homes or their gym to get into some shit? What like 10 like? years. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, if you're consistent, so I guess generally, and you may know this as well, mm -hmm. um, with push-ups. So the rule is, is that if you do push-ups consistently every day for a week, you should be able to double your numbers by the next week. Really? Yeah. I did mm -hmm. not know that. But again, it's just the idea. It's like practice makes perfect, mm -hmm. right? So well, um, I disagree with that. I think practice makes permanent. If you're doing something wrong, you're going to do it wrong all the time. Good practice. Agreed. Makes yeah. Good that's practice. True. Good form. Good form. Form. Exactly. form. All about that form. Yeah. Yes, form. absolutely. Thank you. But I mean, like I said, for me, I really like to focus on people who are starting off. My favorite thing is educating people. Mm -hmm. um, because there is so much misinformation in the fitness right. industry about what working out is, and a lot of people just want tangible, really quick results, quick fixes, and that's not working out. That's not fitness. Fitness is being able to do something consistently. And for me, I really try to reshift everyone's focus and not about, again, the, the physicality. It's more for me about how it makes you feel, because working out always makes you feel good. Maybe not so much for you two after this, but <laughs> for the most part, it's you, an, it you, elevates your mood. Do you, do you adjust uh, your, the programs accordingly to whether it's the person's, whether it's male, female, or, or their, uh, their, their weight? Yeah, absolutely. I think the important, the operative word in personal trainer is personal. So mm -hmm. my job is to actually make sure that I am relating to whoever's standing in front of me right. and being able to modify an exercise based on what their capabilities are. So yeah. what kind of exercise would you give our uh, friend Tony over there? <laughs> well, uh, I feel like maybe you could work on your push-ups a little bit. Uh, guaranteed. But I will give you credit for this because I will focus on the positive. You did good. You were consistent. Okay. And you didn't give up. So that's really, that's fantastic. Thank that's really you. what Star it is. for Tony. So Gold we'll be it. right back with Havana and Mighty, our 23-year-old R&B artist from Toronto. Janelle, it was absolutely fantastic. Thank I'm you glad you put me. these guys through a workout. <laughs> high five, guys. High five. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes, good. Okay. We'll be right back after the break. Okay. Provide light. <laughs> Let's go. Let's rock. As I said, I go by the name of Avaya Mighty. I'm representing Toronto, Canada, Brampton, Mississauga. Stand up. Hey. Look. Avaya Mighty. Bass with a vocal that keeps me hydrated. I'm in my zone. You could see it's vibrating. Sitting in a small cage. My we sippy on gold gates, we sipping on liquor with no chase. We grow, we cut off our old braids, but don't even look at me funny. I use my fist if you looking sideways and Hey, I'll be your if you pushing my patience. Started off with full play, the wiggle my wrist to your nose break. Stick into the pit to your bone frame. My missile leave you with a blown brain. It's like I use propane. I give you a ticket, my stuff is like so plain. Uh, you get hit and listen to this, I'm like soul train. Uh, I'm leaving you lit like you sniffing the uh, don't listen to things if it doesn't have no bass. That's why I got my bass lap. And now give out of all the girls, you know I'm the realest one. Dictator shit. I got a little Hitler blood. Relationship. Me and my bass, we been in love. Go. Bass lap, boy, you up. I don't give a No. All right. No. Boy, you up. I don't give a I don't give a round two. Look, hey, why well, think about it? It's better to try it. Yeah, I turned the bass up. I settled for silence. Yeah, my web were wide, so I tethered the wireless. Yeah, I get it whether I'm dead or alive, kid. Yeah, I come aggressive, that predator violence. Yeah. I get up under your flesh like a virus. Yeah. You couldn't handle my rhetoric tyrant. <laughs> Always in front, cause I'm seldom behind it. Why is it that I ain't talking so much like I'm trying to prove it? Thought I told you back in pop pills. I am the movement. I'm the realest, the baddest, and also I am the truest. Truth is, I am a G. You could minus the unit. Said I got my bass loud. And now give up. Out of all the girls, you know I'm the realest one. Dictator shit, I got a little Hitler blood. Relationship, me and my base, we been in love. Bass loud, I don't give a. 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 